On today's show, it's Cura versus Spider-Man. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. On today's show, I'm going to walk you through my workflow for Cura because it seems that we've been getting a lot of Cura related questions lately. So today I'm going to take you through how I set up Cura, how I bring in uh, a, a 3D printer that's not normally available inside of Cura. So we're going to set up a printer in Cura. We're going to import a model. We're going to slice it and then we're going to send it off to the printer. All right, so we're over here at the computer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a printer. Uh, the printer that we have here now is a Creality CR10, but that's not the printer I want to use for today's demonstration. I actually want to use the Ender 3. So we're going to go into printers and we're going to underneath the settings tab and you're going to add a printer. Now we can see here in the add a printer dialog box that our printer is not listed here. Let's go into other and we'll see that the Ender 3 is not in there as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to grab the Creality CR10 down here where it says Creality CR10 printer name. We're going to change that to the Ender 3. And we're going to add the printer. Now the printer has been added, but it still has the same volume as a CR10, which is what we used. So let's go into our settings one more time under printer, and now we're going to manage the printers. We can see that our Creality Ender 3 has been highlighted. So let's just click on the machine settings, and we're going to make some adjustments here. So we know that the X and Y width on the Creality uh, Ender 3 is 220 by 220 by 250. That is our build volume on the X, Y, and Z. Now we want to change the build plate shape. We're going to leave it at rectangular. We do want to make sure that our heated bed is checked off and origin as center is not checked off. If this is checked off, we're going to end up having a problem and your prints won't start where they're supposed to. So we just want to make sure that origin at center is not checked off and heated bed is checked off. Now the G-code flavor we're going to use, you can see there's many in here. We're just going to use uh, Marlin. Uh, you can see that it's already filled in our start G-code and our end G-code, which is fine. Um, we have a, a 20 millimeter XY, uh, XY mins and XY maxes, and we're just gonna leave all of that alone. We're not gonna touch it. Let's go over to the extruder for a second. And this is all correct here as well. You've got a 0.4 nozzle. If your nozzle is a different size on your Ender 3, then change it. If it's not a different size, then just leave it where it is. And we are going to do a compatible material diameter at 1.75. If this is a different number, please go in and change it. So that's all the changes we're going to do for now. Let's close this up and let's move over to the quality settings. Now, we're going to go with draft quality. So if we just hit that little down arrow, we can see that this is our draft quality. Now, I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to mention it again. How I like to get my first layer down is very, very simple. So if my layer height is 0.2, I want to make my initial layer height 0.3. If your initial layer height is 0.3, you don't have to go over that. But if you are at 0.1, you want to make sure that your initial layer height is 0.2. All right? So this is just the first layer. This is only going to affect the first layer. Now, first layer width down at the bottom here, you can see that there's little pop-outs when you put your mouse over top of, of the area. And please go ahead and read these. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this 140 five percent and the reason that I'm doing that is because I want a little bit more material extruded just on that first layer all right so we don't have to do anything further there 
we can minimize that. Our infill, we are going to go with, I like to try hexagon. Um, it seems to work good for me in, in Cura. You can certainly do the lines, the grid, or the triangles. Um, our infill isn't going to be that high on this particular model. And we're just going to go into uh, that right now. Um, infill density is 20%. That's fine. And we are going to leave it at uh, triangles for now. And that's pretty much all we're going to do there. So we can close up the infill because we don't need that. Uh, let's go into the shells for a second here. You can see that our wall thickness is 0 0.08. Now, on your wall count, I like to have thicker walls, a little bit thicker walls. They seem to work better. So watch what happens here. When I change my wall count to 3, it grays out the wall thickness, which means you can't adjust the wall thickness. But this automatically adjusts it, so your 0 0.8 is now going to become 1.2. So it's going to be a little thicker wall and it's going to help out um, your print overall. Now we're going to leave the rest of this pretty much the way that it is. We don't have to touch anything else in our shells. We're now going to go down to speed because this is very important. You can see here that the print speed is set at 60. Now I do not like to have my print speed that high um, because it introduces artifacts into the print that you don't really need, such as ghosting and salmon skinning. So what I like to do is I like to bring that down to 40. And you can see as soon as I change that, everything else changed. So my initial layer speed is 20 millimeters per second. So when that first layer goes down, it's going to go down much slower. Um, and that is actually a, a good thing. So now we're just going to check into these settings right here. You can see where it says enable jerk control. Now, two things can happen here. If you want your machine to do all of the jerk control, then just uncheck that. But if you want to control that, what I'm going to ask you to do is turn that on. And you see where it says print jerk is 20 set that down to five. It's going to override everything that is on the, the printer initially in its firmware. This is going to override that. And you're going to find that jerk settings, when they're too high, they introduce, again, artifacting, such as ghosting and salmon skinning. So we are going to reduce that down. I'm going to let the, I'm going to let the, the firmware uh, be overridden in this case. Uh, cooling. We want to make sure that our enabled print cooling is checked off. Okay. And our initial fan speed is zero, but our regular fan speed is going to kick in at 0.3 millimeters. So on that second layer, it's going to kick in. Uh, in this case, um, I don't believe we have supports turned on, but we're going to have to generate supports for our model. And we're just going to leave that at all of its default. We're not going to mess with the supports. And the build plate adhesion, we can do a skirt, we can do a brim, we can do a raft or none. I'm going to go to a brim. And uh, actually, no, I want to go to a skirt is actually what I want to do. And the skirt is going to be uh, a four line count. This is a multiple line help to prime your extruder. This really does help. Trust me on this. And we're not going to worry about mesh fixes, so that's pretty much all we have to do uh, to get our print initially set up. Now, let's go ahead and go over to get our model. We are going to go and check into, uh, we got to pull this down, we're going to pull this down and pull it over to here. Ah. There we go. Sometimes you just, it just gives you problems. So, what we want to do is we want to navigate over to Thingiverse. So, we're going to navigate over to Thingiverse. And the model that we're going to grab today, and we're just going to go up here to search. You don't need to be a member to download 
um, from here, but it does help if you are a member. Um, and you can go and, and give uh, people um, donations and things like that for their models. So the one that we are going to download here today, it's called Vintage Spider-Man. Okay, so we're going to go into Vintage Spider-Man. There it is right there by 3DNG. We're going to open it up. We're going to download this file. And then we're going to show it in the folder. We are going to unzip it. Now that we've unzipped it, we are going to just close all that out. We can close out our... Uh, browser as well. Now we're going to bring that model in. So we're going to open up. We're going to navigate to where we put it. In my case, I put it in my downloads folder. So I'm just going to double click that. And there it is right there, Vintage Spider-Man. We'll go into the files and we'll just click on Spidey. And there is the model. Now that automatically centered the model. If you want to move around uh, on here, you can see that moving around is actually pretty easy to do. You can, uh, just by holding down the right mouse button, you can you can move around. If you want to zoom in, all you got to do is use your scroll wheel. Now, you're probably wondering where what all this red is. Now, this red is overhangs, and it's telling us that we need to put in some, some support material, and that's all the areas that are going to be supported. So let's go ahead and change our view from solid view, which is up here in the corner, down to layer view. And I'll, I want to show my top layers. So we're going to show the infill. We're going to show all of the top and the bottom layers as well. I don't care about showing the travel. All right, so once we've prepared it, we can see everything. So we're going to turn off that show top layers and show those, those details. Now we can see everything. So here's our support. We've got support there. We've got support all through here to help support everything. Then we have our first layer down here. Oops, I moved them. We can recenter them later. What I want to do here is I want to take Spidey and I, first of all I'm going to recenter him. And do, 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 do. select the model and we are going to arrange the model. There we go. And because we don't have an SD card in our our printer right now uh, or our computer it is going to give us this. Now, let's go down and look inside this to see if we've got any other issues. I'm going to go right down to the first layer. Now, on our first layer, you can see here, I'm just going to remove this so you guys can see. We're going to zoom in. And you can see this is how the first layer is going to go down. There are some very tiny gaps that you can see, but that's okay. So let's get ourselves an SD card. And we will zoom back out so we can see everything. There we go. And there's Spidey. We're going to get ourselves an SD card. We're going to add it to the SD card. Then we are going to take it over to the computer and, or over to the printer, pardon me, and we're going to start the print. Well, I hope you found that informative. We've got Spider-Man printing over here on the Ender 3, 
And what I'd like you guys to do this weekend is download this model from Thingiverse. The link is in the description down below and uh, print it for yourselves. Use the settings that we used in Cura today. If you're using Cura 3.4.1, if not, print it in your favorite slicer. I don't care. Then what I'd like you to do is take a picture of it and put it up on the Facebook group for the first layer. And just show off your Spider-Man. So I want to thank a few people. First of all, I want to thank you guys for watching the show. You've done, you, you, you come back and watch every week, and I, I can't be happier about that. Um, knowing that you know you guys are doing a fantastic job of getting the word out there about the show and sharing with your friends and family and those people that are interested in 3d printing so I want to thank you the audience as I do every week I also want to thank my patreons for sticking with me and uh, helping us to get things off the ground from time to time we've got a lot of content still coming uh, to go up on patreon which should some of it be going up this coming weekend or early next week just depends on the schedule we got some family issues going on but if you'd like to become a patreon and be a part of what we do here then you can always go to patreon.com slash the first layer and check out the different levels of uh, assistance I guess is the way to put it uh, if you're not into a monthly commitment then you can always go over to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer all of the proceeds that come in for the show all go into the same pool to help us upgrade the the stuff that we have around here uh, like we just recently did our streaming and recording uh, PC so we get a nice crisp image we don't get dropouts like we used to get so everything's working perfectly there uh, I also want to thank my fantastic team Brian Baker Frank Awesome, and always the lovely Jess Cornaching, who come in and volunteer their time to help bring this show together and get it out to you guys uh, so that we can inform you of what's new. I uh, also want to thank, of course, Spool3D.ca. Spool3D, print it right, print it with Spool3D. They've got everything you need from 3D printers to filaments and all the accessories you could need for your next project or upgrade. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool3D. Now, last but not least, I want to remind you, if you are new here, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell so you get notified every time we do a brand new episode or we do a live stream, which we typically do on Wednesdays, and uh, then you'll get notified and you won't be left out in the cold. And also, give this a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down, whatever you think uh, is appropriate for today's video. And leave a comment down below whether of what you liked or what you didn't like. But until I see you guys next time, remember, love your neighbor, love your family, and say something nice to somebody today. And remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. We'll see you again on Monday. Enjoy the weekend.